Good morning, and welcome to The Peorian. I'm your host, Paul Gordon. Most of us are attuned by now to the money problems our state is having and the resulting squabbles between Governor Quinn and the General Assembly, particularly the Republican side of the aisle. But the governor's latest volley, for lack of a better word, has rankled both sides of the aisle. Saying, we can't spend money we don't have, Governor Quinn last month announced budget cuts that include laying off a couple of thousand state employees, closing a prison and a juvenile detention facility, and closing homes for the mentally ill and developmentally disabled. Quinn puts the blame for the cuts on the General Assembly, saying it did not give him enough money in the budget last spring to keep the state running for a full year. He said, quote, it's time for a rendezvous with reality, end of quote. Well, that rendezvous is coming quickly. But who will get the reality check when the General Assembly begins its veto session in a couple of weeks remains to be seen. Again, his own party is displeased with his actions, including State Representative Jahan Gordon, the Democrat from Peoria. She's our guest today, and we'll discuss the governor's actions and other issues with her after these messages. Welcome back to the Peorian. Our topic today is the state budget, in particular recent actions by Governor Pat Quinn. Our guest is State Representative Jahan Gordon, a Democrat from Peoria. Welcome Representative Gordon. Thank it's you. It's an honor to have you with us. Thank you, Paul. Were you surprised by Governor Quinn's actions? You know, unfortunately we have had a lot of, um, we've had a lot of folks who have been at the helm here in the state of Illinois over the last 10 years or so who have taken, um, taken great pleasure in doing flashy news conferences, but not necessarily taking the comprehensive, pragmatic approach of working with legislators on both sides of the aisle in order to come up with comprehensive solutions to the real problems that we face around the state. So I must say that as unfortunate as it is, I, I wasn't completely surprised because this is a story that we've seen playing out before. Did he give anybody in the General Assembly a warning that this was coming? Not to, not to my knowledge, and I've talked to um, quite a few of my colleagues, again, on both sides of the aisle, and I don't know of anyone who knew of the uh, proposed cuts that were um, going to be put on seven facilities across the state. Some of those, as you know, were mental health, facil uh, mental health facilities, state prison, um, Laying, laying off 2,000 people is just something that, in my opinion, is unconscionable. You have said that you think he, I think you, the way you worded it was, it was over the line, that you disagree with his actions. Tell us why more than you have. You know, Paul, I, I sincerely feel that we could have had a much more measured approach, particularly from the um, CEO of the state of Illinois, we have to think about our actions and what those actions have on the lives of people that are going to be affected by those decisions. Um, some of the facilities that were targeted for closures, for example, Lincoln. The mayor of Lincoln um, just indicated last week that they are already seeing a significant decrease in uh, in, in sales tax revenue based on the fact that many of the people living within that community are now afraid that they're going to be losing their jobs. So they're buying less groceries, they're not spending money in the restaurants, they're not buying gas as often, and it has a real live effect on the psychology of people and that then by has a real effect on the Illinois economy. I feel that Governor Quinn could have taken a much more measured approach by working with the legislators, not against us. You know, those of us who have a desire to serve, we want to do the right thing by people. And if there's, if there are issues that we need to work out, let's work on them. Don't go in front of the, uh, the Chicago news media and, 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 and come up with these grandiose ideas that in order to save $55 million in an overall $60 billion budget, that we're going to put 2,000 people in the unemployment line and close seven facilities, five of those being mental health facilities. It's wrong. And when we think about the overall budget being $60 billion and the proposed uh, closures that he put forth last week is going to save $55 million. It's literally less than 1% of the state budget. To be, act, to be completely factual, it's 0.2%, which 
um, within budgeting circles, that could be viewed as a rounding error. There are ways to um, there are ways to find fifty-five million dollars. Uh, measures, m more measured decisions would have been, let's find out how much money we'll save from canceling cable in all of the prisons. Let's find out how much money we can save by additionally streamlining management within some of the Department of Correction facilities. Do they streamlining? Let's be very clear and factual. Some people are going to have their hours cut. Some people might be laid off, but is that better than an entire facility being closed? Absolutely. Let's also look at other ways in which we can um, maybe cut an education program, maybe cut a jobs program within, a, uh, within the Department of Corrections. Are those programs that are needed? Absolutely, but if the, if the alternative is completely closing a facility and laying off, pe laying off people within that community that rely, number one, on that facility being open for their livelihoods, and number two, those people are in prison for a reason. And we need to keep people in prison that need to be in prison in a prison. So I just think that there are other ways to do uh, what needs to be done. And I don't think that the approach he took was a measured approach that we need the chief executive officer in the state taking. You do agree that some cuts somewhere are necessary? Absolutely. We've cut more in the last three years than any other, than any legislature in history. We've already cut over $2 billion out of the state budget, and that's very real. Right now, um, some of the things that, some part of my day is spent going into schools all across my district, and I'm seeing classrooms that have 32, 35, 37 students in that classroom. And that's a very real reality of having budget cuts. In a few moments, we're going to talk about other issues that will come up before the General Assembly during the veto session, which begins October 25th. And we'll talk about other issues as well. Stay tuned. <laughs>